Uh, Chapman? Okay. So for SEOs this week, um, I just wanted to go through basics as well as uh, some strategies we could move forward with in the yeah. future. Um, SEO search engine optimization is basically um, driving traffic into um, OSE's website for visibility. And the main search engine we would use would be Google because, of course, 90% um, of searches are done on Google. Mm. And um, I looked into how many people searched up uh, open source ecology in the past year on Google Trends, and we saw that around 21.5 searches were made per week. But it goes up and down, of course, as you can see in the image. Mm. But this is still very basic um, information. We want more some more of it, like how we could get more people to show up to the website. Um, that but that's for a, this later section. Um, uh, this could be, we can so, use this to track, right? We can track these numbers, yeah? Yes, yeah. Um, I went over what exactly shows up on a page when you make a search. Mm -hmm. So usually there are some paid advertisements at the top with a green ad indication. And then it's followed by a knowledge graph, which is a box. Um, Matthew, if you could like search up, um, yeah, search up some random thing and something might pop up. And I just look up open, open source, I guess. Yeah. Open source. Okay. Okay. So one of the things I noted here was when we search up open source ecology, all it, we have like the perfect ranking where it's um, open source ecology at the top, and then all the results are related to open source ecology. But that's a really niche type of search, and I don't think that a lot of people would just go in and search that. So I typed in open source, and then it was usually software related. Mm -hmm. And then on the open source page, there's um, an answer box. Uh, can you go to open source, Matthew? Would you yeah. mind just pasting the, the link to that working Google Doc? Yes. Yeah. OK, let's do that. So we can also um, get in there. Okay. You can do it in the chat. Yeah, OK. Oh, OK. Wait, Matthew, copy the link and then just send it into chat. This oh, yeah. one? Yeah. OK. Okay, uh, let me know if you can access it. Yeah, we can't access it. Um, request access. You can here, feel here. free I'll to send, open I'll, it up. I'll send a link right now. Yeah, like feel free to open that thing here. up to to the world. Like, uh, yeah, I just I just sent a link and I opened up the link sharing option, so everyone should have access. Uh, okay. See. Yeah, Josh has it. You have to do it. You're sharing it with specific people, so uh, yeah, we're sh we're sharing it with just uh, uh, people within our organization. Yeah. Okay, this link should work. It's open to. Okay. Oh, it works. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, that works. Um, so. I mentioned the paid advertisement part. Um, this is usually inorganic SEO where you have to pay to get your um, website to the top of a page. Then there's the knowledge graph. Um, this is a box where usually- Are you sharing the screen or no, just you're just describing it? Describing oh, it I as I highlight it. Or, sorry, shoot. We're on page, uh, Oh, yeah, there, knowledge graph. H3. Yeah. H3. So this is a box where um, Google will actually pull results from different sources that might be uh, further down. And then it can just paste quick answers into the box. Uh, a downside to this would be that some of the answers might not have sources linked to what the question is asking. So um, not sure. If Oh, like let's say um, on the website for open source ecology, you answer a certain question, they might not even put the source into the answer. 
There's also people ask, also ask box. And this is for general questions that might be related to the search. And usually this is a place that open source ecology could take advantage of in terms of when you search up open source and the software, open source software usually pops up. There is the first question that says, um, what is open source? I don't know how exactly we could get um, the, the spiders that reach for the results in Google to bring up that um, open source ecology's answer to that question into that box, but we could find a way. Um, moving forward, there are also some videos sometimes, and then we move into the top ranked results. Um, this is the ideal spot that um, we want for searches that aren't just open source ecology. We want open source ecology to pop up when users type in open source. Um, we can't really, as you can see here, what if you type open? Um, that's a really basic word. So the results for that are super diverse. So that would be too high competition. And for SEOs, that's not a good place to try to target. You would want to target open source as the keywords instead of just open. And then I also looked into what if you just typed ecology? And that was more definition based, where a lot of the results were pulling in websites that would answer what is ecology, of course. And I feel like open source ecology could try to find a way to get a result in that page as well. Mm -hmm. And then where do SEOs come into the picture of recruiting the participants and the instructors? We understand that we need to um, first um, expose open source ecology to, let's say, person X, get them aware of it, provide a meaning to them, have them retain the information, convert them into a believer, of course, and then they would eventually go into the steam camps. So SEOs are usually the beginning process providing exposure so that it would lead to attention and then participation in um, steam camps. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then what types of SEOs are there? There are three types, on-page, technical, and off-page. On-page refers to, relates to the content on the website in terms of the images, um, the keywords you put on the page. Um, and you can even have met, meta, meta tags where there's like hidden code into the images that could help um, the, the crawlers or spiders reach your page. There's technical SEO in terms of the back end. It's more of the structural code. It's more about readability. And Google determines how high quality your website is through this part. And then if it's deemed high quality, they'll usually put your website higher up in the ranking. Hmm. And then there's off-page SEO, which is relates to backlinks. So it's when other websites have links to get to your website. So the more there are of that, uh, of those, then that would be better. Yeah. So we looked into how Google exactly reaches for results. Um, of course, the most basic algorithm they used was PageRank, which was developed years ago by Google creator Larry Page. Um, it basically um, connects a bunch of links and puts a numerical weight on it, and then uses some probability to you know represent how likely a person is, would be to click on the page. Um, there are a lot of factors. So at the end here, you, you can see there's about 200 factors or more that Google would use to um, decide where your page would rank. And the challenge for the coming weeks would be deciding which factors we want to go and pursue to increase ranking. Hmm. And then at the bottom, just some um, basic videos, overview, and yeah. Do you have any questions? So the, the idea here, so here it's exploring, okay, what kind of like definitions and a little background research on it. This is not like, um, like as far as actionable items on this, 
that's the next stage? Yeah. Yeah, that'll be the next stage. Yeah. Yep. This is just yep. this is just us getting um our you know our feet wet into this and just doing some research and seeing how mm -hmm. uh some some things that uh OSC can can do with this basically just seeing if it's a feasible, a feasible uh, avenue to take. There's there's probably some high impact things that we're like what I suspect is happening like high impact things that we're not aware of that with minimum efforts like you get the 80 20 rule you get 20 percent effort to get 80 percent of the optimization effect because right. we have not done really any of that in any deliberate way so i probably mm -hmm. think just at least awareness of like scoring where we're at like if we could score where we're at and then kind of think about what are some easy pickings that we can do throughout our mm -hmm. web presence or throughout how we approach this there's probably that that we'd want to do yeah 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 okay any feedback okay. from andreas or yeah no i'm thinking saying like what's what's the most impactful full thing that we can focus on first because definitely like uh, we we don't want to do nothing about it right mm -hmm. right we want to do something about it since we um, have never really Or do we? Or can we say is it good enough yet? Or is our like? Can you guys, from the background research, can you guys tell whether like we're actually like pathetic or good or like? Uh, any, um, any thoughts? We can we can look into that. Uh, we have so as you see, like in the Google Trends, um, it's uh, OSC has this only gets like an average of. 21.5 web searches per week so maybe we can increase that it, it could probably be uh, helpful for OSC is uh, in general it just uh -huh. stimulates more interest uh, for OSC I think open source ecology does a really good job for the the, the words that and like the ideas that um, your organization represents but it is really a niche type of understanding that a lot of users may not even get to be exposed to because they won't be searching this kind of stuff maybe or if you search in like more general words like collaboration a lot of other results will pop up so we don't really know the SEO perform or optimization like how how good OSE's like website is because we we don't really know like the like the technical code in it or like the the, the front end where like the images are embedded or something but uh, mm -hmm. so moving forward we yeah. could I don't know how exactly to implement like meta tags or like some keywords in properly but um, I just have a question like who works with like the website for open source ecology uh, so we have a sysadmin but we, we don't really have anybody like doing well, I mean, we have a sysadmin that, that is doing that, but nothing like marketing related. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just uh, by the way, uh, Google Trends, actually, that's useful. Let me share my screen actually real quick. Um, present now your entire screen. Check this out. Um, glory day of the TED Talk. So I that noticed was, that. Yeah. So like 2011, January 2012. Yeah, like this was like the TED Talk around. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the TED Talk right there. Uh-huh. And then we kind of like going down since then. Uh, but yeah, that's interesting. But if we're, if we're like way in a the dust there, like <laughs> like 25, we're saying like 25 per week. Um, that's That's what we're saying. Like this says like 50 or like 60 but it's like it drops down like every other week so it's like you guys said like around 25 or so 20 to 25 a week yeah and where do you get that particular number because i don't see that here um i uh just kind of downloaded the uh, okay. spreadsheet and just took the mean from that ah, okay yeah 22 per week yeah so if um yeah we could probably um do we have any idea like what's a desirable number there like or is open source ecology the right 
term to look at like what about like steam camps or like open source ecology steam camps or whatever like i i don't know um, uh yes um yeah, so open source ecology, we think it's it's kind of a niche thing. Yeah. People only look up open source ecology, they want to look up open source ecology. We don't um, know the exact number of, people, of searches that we would need, but definitely we'd say a substantial amount of increase. Yeah. It's, it's kind is of there a, way, is there a way to automatize um, with Google, Google AdWords? Um, so that we can see who enters our web page and then use that data to automatically change the keywords. Or, or for example, in Facebook, you have this uh, pixel which can collect demographics and, and then uh, you can use lookalike audiences in the Facebook uh, ads. Is there something similar that we can use for Google? Um, uh, yeah, so, the, um, so what you're saying is using the AdWord, AdWords to sort of a testing ground for keywords? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, like is there a way to see, uh, to collect data for from Google Analytics um, so that we don't need to, which then can be feeded back to Google AdWords, uh, for example, so that instead of writing down which keywords we want our Google AdWords to re reach out to, that it uses the data from whoever enters our web page. Uh, and then it used that data to broadcast its its uh, advertisements to similar people. Oh, I see. We could look into Google Analytics to see which keywords would work. Because it's such a small organization, it would be real nice if it's if there were a way to automatize uh, this process as well as it would be probably yeah. quite efficient. Um, but then see. again, like. Wouldn't approach the sound approach be like? It seems like Steam Caps. It shouldn't shouldn't be necessarily related to open source ecology, should it? It should be uh, just like the things we want, which is like Steam Caps or open source product design, like things yeah, like that. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, so like we can maybe like keywords like um, technical boot camp or uh, open source conferences or something yeah or like like something more related to steam camps versus just open source ecology i think yeah. so i think so because nobody's gonna know, know to look at open source ecology but there there's already people looking at steam camps like in mass mm -hmm. um yeah collaborative design you know that may mm -hmm. be yeah collaborative design steam camps yeah mm -hmm. okay so I think uh, I think we should go back to some of the keywords, like like maybe identify some few keywords that we really want to focus on. I think, and then yeah. verify those keywords. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think I think that's a, a better approach if we can uh, just focus on keywords just for Steam camps. So that's the scope of the project. Um, uh, I like to address Eric's point. Uh, so first, he said about um, just like a TED talk, he said that maybe like a review from a, a major 3D printer channel could po uh, you get a pop subscribers. Can you explain? Mm -hmm. I think that would be a pretty good idea. Yeah. Yeah, that's one way to go about it. So core of the marketing strategy being things like that, but I don't think that removes the need for also for... Yeah could be a way I mean there's different ways um, what else um, did you guys cover what you had uh, what else sorry uh, did you guys cover what you have or you've got more there oh uh, we I just guess. have a little bit more yeah why don't uh, you continue with that there mm -hmm. 
Okay. So we're just gonna okay, so moving forward let's see. Okay, so yeah. Um I'll I'll cover the community organizations. Yep. So first the first step to establishing the partnership with community organizations, we need to understand OSC's objective mission uh so objective in terms of like the objective of the partnership. So what did they want to get out? What does OSC want to get out of the partnership? What is OSC's mission? Uh, the demographic OSC serves, constraints, so monetary or organizational, and what's OSC's vision? Um, so we believe that the objective for this partnership is you know, to bring more people uh, to STEAM camps and getting more uh, and getting more experience and uh, with you know the open source environment uh, and the mission is uh, is to basically inspire uh, uh, social uh, inner innovation through open source collaboration uh, and, and social entrepreneurship uh, demographic would most likely be makers college students um, any uh, upcoming uh, social entrepreneurs uh, constraints. You said that uh, five hundred dollars goes towards like the um, per person goes towards the instructor, and the other half, the other five hundred goes towards uh, open source ecology. So that's what open source ecology has to work with. And uh, also, the in terms of marketing wise, uh, open source ecology doesn't have uh, a full department or a lot of staff in that right. aspect. So we need to take that into account. And then the vision is uh, of open source ecology is to promote uh, and establish this open source collaborative innovation community to uh, inspire and create uh, social change uh, or social innovation. So knowing about OSC, we determined that uh, we establish a criteria in which OSC can evaluate organizations in question. So versus the mission of the organization, what demographic do they serve? What resources do they have? Uh, the true uh, geographic location, uh, the geographic reach. So this means do they have multiple branches and, and where are those branches located? Uh, transparency of the organization. So we want to partner with an organization organization we can trust so if they post their annual reports and they're transparent about their financials those organizations are usually more trustworthy and then finally uh, current programs that they have and how can OSC steam camps fit into that into their current programs so again like just like the colleges uh, we plan on issuing weights on each of these criteria and calculate a weighted average for each of them each organization of interest, and then based on that criteria, perhaps uh, when we do more implementation-based research, we can reach out to these organizations and start researching on how uh, OSC can establish this partnership with them. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so before I move on, do you have any questions? Um, no, that's good. Okay. So these are just some organizations of interest we have here. Um, so this one, uh, Village Enterprise, their, the location is East Africa, and um, they promote sustainable and affordable agricultural development. So perhaps maybe like the open source um, community can can sort of particip can participate in this and, you know, they can pitch this idea as, you know, this open source community, it's a lot of the things that we make through here is can be used for uh, you know agricultural development as well so this is something that can be of interest um, next is the echoing green Inc. echoing green ink so um, they're located in New York and they look for social entre entrepreneurship organizations and offer them support through mentorship and um, funding, so uh, the so open source ecology can perhaps be part of that mentorship aspect of things in terms of like maybe product development, 
and Steve Kenson come into that through um, just training these people to work with in the open source community and with that they can take off of some of the ideas developed in the open source community and help them with their product development. And then uh, there's a Skull Foundation They're located in California. Um, they identify programs and people with uh, that bring positive change around the world and um, they fund them. And then finally, there's Network for Teaching Entrepreneurship. Uh, so NFT's mission is to inspire young minds and equip them with an innovator's eye. So this is, they take a more of a mentorship role than all these, than most of these other organizations um, in, their, in their clients who are uh, sixth to 12th graders. Um, and they do this through um, teaching youth um, initiative, adaptability, and the ones underlined is what we think open source ecology STEAM camps can help with. So communication, collaboration, creativity and innovation, critical thinking and problem solving, uh, future orientation, opportunity recognition, risk tolerance. Hmm. So what they have is, oh, and um, one in four of their alumni go on to start businesses. So uh, their main program is the entrepreneurship pathway. So they do this through uh, four steps. So each of these steps has a conceptual side and a application side. So the conceptual is like a classroom setting. And then the application is they um, give activities out to the students to apply their knowledge. So first is awareness. Hmm. And they, and um, someone mentioned the UNDP goals. So this organization actually um, challenges these students during this phase to create and develop, think of innovative solutions to the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Um, and then in exposure, uh, students learn entrepreneurship and technical skills to create, develop, and test products and business plans. So perhaps uh, OSC STEAM camps come into this uh, in terms of teaching students technical skills and the collaboration skills they would need. Mm. And then next is expertise. So students learn how to create and pitch business plans and um, NFTE helps these students prepare for national pitch competitions to obtain seed capital if they would like to. So that's the expertise side. And finally, application. So this is, it teaches more uh, advanced business modeling, validation, product development, marketing to students. And these students will take, um, this will prepare students to take a, a exam called the Certiport Entrepreneurship and Small Business Exam. So they become certified uh, mm. for entrepreneurship and small businesses. Um, so um, we think that um, this organization is more of a takes more of a mentorship role to their clients, and um, a lot of the skills that they're trying to teach um, their clients is what OSC STEAM camps would teach them. So. You know, communication, collaboration, creativity, critical thinking, opportunity recognition. So that's something that we think um, would fit well with OSC STEAM camps. And then finally, they're widespread with 10 branches from New York to St. Louis to Los Angeles. Yeah, interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, before we, we move on, is there any questions? No, that's good. Any questions from Andreas or? I have a question too, actually, Martin. How old, like, have we have we had younger people on the STEAM camps? Um, Not so much. Uh, just a few, like it's a small percentage. But no, this is the entrep. I, I like the last organization for in terms of entrep enterprises a mindset. That's the kind of thing we want to teach. Yeah, and I know other people do similar things with young people even younger, so it should work. Uh, yeah. Cool. cool. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Let's. I'm just looking at the chat. Um, um, Eric, can you explain? Uh, is, is is what you guys are talking about in the chat? Is it just um, like YouTube reviews, influencers? Um, I have a question for to Eric about that last oh, bit. Okay. 
no pack class. Um, what what exactly um, would that entail? Matthew, as you explained in your... Yeah. Um, Skill Foundation, I think. Uh, so, Matthew? Yeah. Um, Erica's asking if for the advising or the tutoring advising group that you mentioned if we could make a class for them on 3d printing uh that could be you know uh, that could be something like an avenue to take uh, like a 3d printing class or i think the steam camps teach that too yeah. so um and and i think the the steam camps would fit really well with this organization because you know, there a lot of the things that they teach in the STEAM camps or what they want to teach to these their clients, so like collaboration and uh, critical thinking skills and things like that. So um, that could be some some avenue to take. Mm -hmm. But definitely, definitely, like there can also be like um, if if uh, open source ecology would like, they can you know offer like. Instead of the whole Steam camp, they can offer like uh, maybe like specialized classes throughout the throughout their program, which would equate to a Steam camp. That could that could be something uh, to look into. Yeah, that that could be. Um, I like the nature of the group. Yeah, exposing people to the entrepreneurial mindset is good. Uh, we can definitely offer some things like the three D printer builds as a part of the entire Steam camp. Or it depends what what kind of uh, it depends on some details like what mm -hmm. how would that how would that exactly work something yeah could possibly look into um so yeah okay and then um before we conclude the call we just have some questions we'd like to ask mm -hmm. um i think we covered most of these during the, throughout the call so there's the uh Anything, any points to add in the college criteria Excel sheet? I think we covered that. Yeah, I think we covered that one. <clears throat> Are there planned locations for the STEAM camps? I think we covered that as well. Yeah, um, especially not right now since probably the next one would be a remote one in probably like July. We're looking at doing something different, so not really relevant for, well, somewhat relevant for this marketing by all means, but yeah, mm -hmm. like physical locations, we can't talk about that yet. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then the last one um, is uh, what resources open source ecology are you willing to put into a partnership? And since the Steam camps um, require like funding, um, who would fund the Steam camps in a partnership? <laughs> it would have to be them since we we need to cover costs and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, there have to be be some kind of a sponsorship involved because mm -hmm. i mean we don't really have an an operating budget like we we don't have program funding to do that we we get paid for doing that so mm -hmm. it would have to come out of that um and then bigger question is so we talked about um so, so just kind of to bigger overview here so we talked about there's the seo there's the partnerships now what about um so what we mentioned before about um, so the partnerships are a particular approach particular way to um, market our stuff to to different people what about just a more f more focused like plain here's the list of venues and all of that uh, I don't know it seems that keeps coming back to me is probably that's something we might want to pivot more to as far as getting uh, kind of like okay this is our master list like when we're executing marketing 
uh, an extensive list of places and procedures that we follow. Like I, I think it seems to me that that's emerging as something that that's definitely a gap. I think the the search engine optimization is one passive thing we can do in the background, but that that still mm -hmm. won't address the uh, like the active active pr pursuit of marketing that we do. So mm -hmm. what do you guys think about kind of pivoting to um, more of the generating of the, the kind of like, like the ma master marketing list? Yeah, I definitely think there's a gap between the, the schools we listed and the community organizations and somewhere with both of them, we could find an, a, an actual list of like let's say partners schools or like certain individuals that would be really resourceful for um, open source ecology and what and what about like the the grant the greater thing of like the, the you know like all the different online um so magazines uh whatever websites like all the other stuff between social media and, and publications and even like plain advertising on on different channels like that th that's kind of like what i keep going back to as um what would be our plan to do that because right now that's kind of like not i'm not seeing that here so much um andreas is that can i ask you based on what we talked about before andreas does that, that make sense like what are we asking? Yeah, I mean it's if if um, of of course we have to see like how much time different things take, but it would be good to have, um, for example, some kind of direction. How do we put everything together? If we have SEO, we also need um, to build create some kind of template for press releases. Um, how do we best write content marketing uh, landing page? Um, and how do we? How much money do we put in Facebook versus Google, like social media? Um, the entire like big, big pictures. Uh, um, so is is the that maybe also maybe we can update on like so out from these partnerships? Will there be? Uh, will your next step be to go out and find partners, or will it be to uh, also, for example, come with with read what was for? SEO uh, and how is it with, for example, uh, what's your view on on Facebook and and uh, budget allocations? Is this is that something which is part of this project? Um, uh, so in our framework, we also we do have um, like social media, um, so that does include like things like Facebook. We have um, let me just bring up the framework real quick. I think uh, the main issue here would not be not pursuing them. It's more like we would like to pursue a lot of branches, but uh, in, in all honesty, uh, our, our team at the moment is actually a little smaller than we thought it would be. And we could each tackle like a branch, of course, but um, yeah. we could look into other stuff, but then we'd have to like take a pause on what we're working on currently and then move to a different branch. But we could... Mm -hmm. Of course, social media in terms of like Facebook ads and Google ads and analytics would be really good. Yeah, yeah. so we have, um, what we do have is we have like word of mouth, so like referral program. We have um, the like social media, so that includes viral marketing and paid advertisements on social media. And I think we touched upon that a little bit today with uh, we, uh, Eric talking about the um, YouTube or uh, pay, paid re uh, reviews, and then um, from from like three D printer manufacturers, there's um, uh, there's AdWords. So uh, open, uh, Marston, you said that uh, there's a you have you guys have a grant for AdWords. So yeah. we were also thinking of looking into how to optimize AdWords. Um, your your usage of AdWords right now, and and then finally like an email, uh, 
marketing. So you have the newsletter. So um, how to get more people to sign up for these newsletters to um, so that they can um, maybe attend the Steam camps. Mm -hmm. So we can look into like it, 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 is that what you sort of thinking about, Marcin? Like the um, sort of like more uh, ex trying to get just just get more exposure. And, yeah, it's uh, people more about the exposure in this? part. I think. Um... I think if we talk about like priorities, it seems that the exposure is number one. I think the SEO is consistent with that. Mm -hmm. But second to that is just the, the plain advertising. You know, how do we get that message out just through standard channels like mm -hmm. people advertise, right? So you've got venues that you reach out to and, and audiences there. I think that part we, we should probably given that you know we we can only do so much like it wasn't clear right. to me like what what exactly we could do but i think it's becoming clear that if if we have to prioritize strongly it's like i would say it would be the seo and mm -hmm. uh just the plain i mean what do you call it like the the social media slash uh I mean, what do you call it like what what's the word we're looking for the the outreach list like like marketing plan, which yeah. means it's it's essentially like an itemized list of here's the venue, mm -hmm. here's audience, here's cost and mm -hmm. procedure to do it, and just saying that we we, we should expect such and such um, returns, like conversion rates from them. Like, what 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 do we call this thing? That what, what I'm describing? Is there a name for that? Um. I don't know if this is the right word, yeah. but some sort of promotion advertising mix where mm -hmm. each type of strategy you'll have like, okay, you'll do this, 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 of course. Yeah. Yeah. Potential returns, how competitive, like how difficult each branch would be to implement, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're already going down s s very specific brand. Like for example, the partnerships, that's a very specific branch, mm -hmm. right? And I think, because I think the risk there is high because if the thing doesn't work out, then we, you know, we're, uh, I think that takes more effort, whereas we can be putting that mm -hmm. effort into a more blanket approach just to get that word mm -hmm. out. Like to me, that okay. seems, I mean, to me, that seems to be the, the more impactful, like if we assess, you know, we, we put in a certain amount of resource, like, well, first of all, you guys helping us out to pr to create this strategy and then expecting that we might have to go through a certain cost of customer acquisition per per given seed that we fill well the question is what do we do to do that like in my initial proposal i was yeah. saying uh something like what is the you know what is the procedure we have to execute and what's the return on investment on it but but more like along the line lines of the numbers game because it will be somewhat of a numbers game in terms of locations uh all over the world and the initial meme of saying 12 by 12 so 12 locations with 12 participants at a time so it seems like more like a blank blanketing uh the world with um these announcements that that enough people get to hear about it you know mm -hmm. so just like yeah. just getting the um the message out there and getting exposure because maybe right now the problem is you know maybe not a lot of people know about this and um, right. You know, me too. And maybe that that itself can solve the problem. You never know. So yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think, I think for us the challenge is that, like you said, we're niche, right? And, mm -hmm. and maybe we got to be thinking, okay, well, how do we get out of the niche and say, okay, well, here's uh, we're competing now with, okay, this is the Steam Camp market and known procedures for how to get in there, or the three D printing mm -hmm. market or workshops market kind of deal. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's Steam yeah, camp like, specifically. Like the boot camp or something, like technical boot camps or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. technical boot yeah. camps. I like that. Are um, like startup. It's like startup camps, you know. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I okay. think that that part. I think, uh, Andreas, any feedback on what what that thing? Yeah, is Yeah, I mean, I, I would basically put it as in that case as like two points. Like one point is branding, the other one is to have a digital footprint. 
and then to have either desktop procedures or or some kind of, of list of, of uh, uh, return of in investment for different strategies for both branding and digital fr footprint, uh, for example. Yeah, that would be well, not so much really great. I wouldn't call it branding because that's like more. It is <laughs> it's kind of finding out how, how to use our narrative so other people can understand it. Uh, yeah. So if, 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 for example, someone else has never heard of open source ecology, they go out and search for, uh, I don't know, sustainability makerspace. Then, yeah. then we have a piece which they can understand. Yeah, but I think I think we can be very specific. So the product we're we're saying that we're trying to sell right now is the Steam Camp, right? So then we can get mm -hmm. really focused around that. So not open source ecology, but Steam Camp, right? So we kind of like yeah. pivot that mm -hmm. discussion away from the niche into just blanketing the world with known with a known product. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because, because I mean, the thing is, we believe that we have a very unique kind of a Steam Camp, and but and we know that there's Steam Camps out there, and people pay money for them, and a lot of people mm -hmm. visit them. Oh yeah, right. Mm -hmm. A lot of there's a lot of like technical boot camps out there too. You know, so this is I maybe mean, that's that's just a market that we're uh, competing in. Uh, so that's something you know we can look into in terms of like how to reach this audience. And, yeah. Um, and there's a lot, and you know, there's a lot more with the steam camps and just the tech, technical, um, the technical aspect of learning things, right? There's the collaboration, uh, there's the open source community, and so there's a lot more to offer than you know a lot of these other technical camps. And I guess what you're trying to say is yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. get like the um, get this message out about we're not just uh, we, we we're not just going to offer um, just technical you to learn technical skills, but you'll come in the Steam camps, make friends, uh, join this community, yeah, uh, and and learn a lot of lifelong skills as well, such as you know communication, collaboration. Uh, so, Absolutely. I think maybe that's what we're trying to get out at. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and also like beyond the like you said, the technical camp, boot camps. There's a very specific place where these steam camps do occur, and that is for students, like at the high school level or college, like high school definitely, where they're trying to get into a good college and get additional skills. I mean, that's mm -hmm. a well-known, like steam camps are a very big and well-known market. So, so that plus like this thing on top of steam camps, which is this more like what you just described, Matthew. Uh, but. Uh, I think this, but for the academic audience, like schools, high schools, universities, STEAM, it's like that's the that's a buzzword, right? So there's a right, lot of yeah. lot of activity around that, and I think we, we just got to pursue that and get into those channels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I, I for think, sure. So, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. So getting that exposure through through these established channels already. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I think. This then this week, um, so in our framework, we do have um, so we have email, uh, an email branch, an adverts branch, social media branch. So we can do uh, that sort of thing because uh, you mentioned you want to generate more exposure for the Steam camps. Yeah. So we can look at that this week versus last week was more uh, targeted. So because like this partnerships are definitely more targeted. SEO is a little bit more targeted as well, so we can do that where it's more uh, just like a what you like what you said blanket strategy and just generate a lot of exposure for Steam cans because that that could in and in and of itself solve the problem too. I so. I think so. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, okay. Uh, is there? Can we add something like? Uh, to the original strategy, which is, um, or kind of like replace some of the other things, kind of modify it to say, um, I mean, there's email and other strategies, but the thing that I'm, I'm kind of missing there is, um, I mean, not, not specifically like email, but, but what's the, it, cause it could be like email could be one procedure, but we're more interested in like, okay, what is the list of venues, right? 
like that list mm -hmm. of the different places. So how we re outreach, like whether it's email or whatever social media or whatever, those are like kind of like more the execution points. But I think it's more the identification mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. uh, all the venues, which then gets into like, OK, how do we actually reach out to them? What, what are the mechanisms by which we reach them? What's the procedure we take? That will kind of come out in a wash, right? OK. So, so are you saying you want to sort of like, uh, like in, instead instead of just like, um, you know, email marketing, right? You just want to you want to do more like targeted email marketing. So in a specific, like geographic location, know what know who to market to, and what location geographic location, I guess target uh, targeted marketing in terms of email or social media or AdWords. So like, uh, so instead of just, so it was also like an implementation side, but you're also thinking of the strategic side of things, right? Yeah, more like the strategic side of things, which which are the venues we need to contact, but not, you're saying like geographically based, but I don't think there is that specific requirement mm -hmm. if we go to the global audience. I mean, first right. it's like, I think um, since we're in a global world, I mean, people read, probably specific well like we talk from the states I mean there's yeah I, I would okay. just say that regarding the geographic specificity that's not I'm not sure how important that mm -hmm. is given that this is a pretty much a global program yeah okay but maybe like maybe like a like a demographic specificity it's, yeah per se. yeah like demographic okay. like as in okay this is our uh, students who want to take steam camps or people who mm -hmm. want to uh, be social entrepreneurs things like that uh, around around okay. the steam steam camp world yeah okay so mm -hmm. i think what we can do next week is we can sort of do maybe a competitive analysis for the steam camps uh and and basically just determine like what type of people are going to be interested in the steam camps and will be as who would be actively or maybe even passively looking for these uh, steam camps, but like are very open to the idea of it, so that we can market, you know, the email or adverts or uh, social media campaigns towards them, so they can get the exposure that they need. Um, can you include in that, like, because the the thing of the venues, like, I'm not hearing that the like the venues as in. Um, I guess the demographic, the, the question where they mm. hang out online, right? Yeah. Like, so it's we'll, not... We'll, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that, that's that's part of the... Yeah, so the basically just understanding the audience, basically. Is that correct? Yeah, which means that we can then say, okay, these are the specific action points we need to take to reach those audiences. Yeah. Okay, okay. That would be awesome. Andreas, does that sound right? Yeah, I, that makes total sense because I mean, execution, we can figure it out. Um, but like having, knowing who to reach out to and how to do it, uh, I agree. And also like uh, one, one of the big, kind of big issues when, when looking for instructors were um, that they thought, some of them thought that our strategy plan um, were a little bit small. So if we have something, if we can go to, also, I said this, this marketing plan will not only be used to actually marketing, but it will also be used for when I approach uh, future instructors and says, hey, this is our marketing plan and, and these are our target audience and this is how, how we, we um, will reach them. Uh, so it's by itself, the marketing plan will be used when I market OSC to future instructors. So um, I think it would be, it would be really okay. nice. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, sense. maybe like, yeah, it makes sense. So maybe like more of like a sort of a market analysis or something, so we can understand who this audience is and who who's 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 uh, the target demographic for Steam camps. Yeah, and how to reach them as as, as much and how to and how to reach them. Right. Right. Okay. That sounds right. Yeah. Okay, we can definitely do that. That's even that. Down. And, and like if we see that um, that a lot of these people are probably hanging out in like social media or best way to reach them is email or something, yeah. then we can have like a sort of recommendations on that. Yeah. 
for next week. Okay. That sounds awesome. good. Awesome. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. So I think that concludes the meeting. So if you have any questions, uh, just you know, you can send me or chat in the email. An email. Um, we will try to get the wiki going again. Yeah. Um, and then post everything that we've done so your team can look at everything. Yeah. Uh, I think what we're going to do this week is um, do this market analysis to understand the audience and how to reach out to them. And um, as well as per perhaps maybe restructuring our framework so we can better get a grip on um, sort of the our, our overall strategy on how to um, how to recruit people for these team camps. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think, uh, does that sound good? Does that sound like a clear path? Yeah, yeah, it okay. sounds very, uh, sounds very um, detailed. So that's, that's exactly what we need. Just, you know, um, just a sort of good general direction to go to. And that gives us a lot of avenues, avenues to, uh, to approach. Okay. Is there is there anything that you think that we have missed, uh, me and Martin, which which is important? Uh, uh, well, so what what do you mean by anything that we think yeah, like, we have missed? Like, like, um, if, if there's anything we haven't thought about, which you think would be good to to include um, as well as our focus um, points. Well, we have on our so we have on our. Um, our brand, our framework. Um, we'll post that in the wiki. There's like open source events or trade shows that we're thinking of. Maybe outreaching to uh, an academic conferences to acquire um, instructors. So maybe like uh, student researchers or professors can be instructors. So that's what we were thinking of. Because um, our uh, strategy right now has two avenues. One is the recruiting participants side of things and then the other is recruiting instructors because Morrison said that um, that you know to get to do more steam camps they just they don't they just as don't need uh, participants but they also we also need instructors to teach them steam camps so we have like two sides in our um, framework to do both to for for both of those. Um, for finding instructors, I don't know, maybe it depends on who you're looking for, but like, uh, I didn't have a problem finding instructors. Uh, okay. was getting them to, to stay long enough, and, and one of the points where they dropped off were, uh, well, one of them were, were commitments to something which may or may not generate an income, and the other one were, were lack of, of, of marketing plan. Um, but of course, if you have other ideas, then it would be really mm -hmm. Good to have an, um, if you have other suggestions of who might be potential useful instructors. Um, uh, okay, so if, so do you want us to? Would you like us to focus more on recruiting participants and like the focus of the scope yeah. should be From just more along the participants? In my part, yes. What do you think, Martin? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, okay. Um, All right. So, yeah, so we can sort of restructure this framework because right now we have instructors and participants uh, one branch for one side of the structure for instructors and one side of the framework yeah. for participants yeah. but maybe um if recruiting instructors is another problem then we can do more uh participant side focus more on the participant side of things yeah i'm kind of uh -huh. going by the assumption that the curriculum and instructors we we will have less issue with that I, th okay. I think if we have limited energy and we prioritize between instructors and participants, it's I would say it's clearly mm -hmm. uh, participants okay. that, that we need. Perfect. And given that okay. we only have so much time left in the semester, right, the quarter, then yeah, we uh, let's do a yeah. good job on the participants. Yep. All right. Yeah, we can do that then. That yep. makes that makes our job a lot easier. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. So we can uh, yeah. So we'll definitely next week. Um, change up the framework to reflect these changes um, and mm -hmm. uh, you know look into sort of the market analysis of who's our audience and how to approach them and then we can sort of uh, provide um, provide you with a new framework which is will be our strategy 
and then uh, talk about, you know, specific, uh, you know, talk about the research we've done in terms of figuring out who the audience is and how to reach them and maybe provide some, hopefully maybe provide some actionable uh, things for open source ecology to do. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that sounds All good. Right. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good, guys. Right. Okay. So, um, so next week, uh, we can have the call 2.30 our time. So I think your time is 4.30. Yep. Um, okay. So we'll do that. All right. Okay. 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 Well, thanks, guys, then. So, yeah, we'll talk, we'll talk soon, and we can uh, communicate by email in the meantime. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so okay. much. Thanks, thanks guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye.